Chapter 15. Poole's Story. I must ask you to remain quiet, sir, Poole whispered as they walked. I think it would be best if you didn't know you were here. Listening in would be best. I understand, Anderson said. It was hard for the lawyer to keep his hand from shaking. Candle wax dripped on his hand, but he made no noise. He followed Poole to the top of the laboratory stairs. The butler indicated that he would stand to one side and listen. He took a deep breath, knocked with somewhat uncertain hand on a door. Sir? Poole called through the door. Mr. Utterson is here to see you. A voice answered from within. Tell him I cannot see anyone, it said shakily. Thank you, sir, Poole answered. He seemed pleased with the voice's response. He started back down the stairs. Utterson followed him behind him. When they were once again in the courtyard, Poole turned back to the lawyer. Now tell me, sir, Poole said. Was that my master's voice? It seems much changed, Utterson answered, very pale. Well, I certainly think so, said the butler. Could I work in this house for twenty years and not know my master's voice? No sir. That voice is not my master's. Something has happened to him, or he's been taken away. It's been eight days now, and I am at my wit's end. This is a very strange fool. It's rather wild tale, my man, Utterson said. Suppose you are right, and Dr. Jekyll has been murdered or kidnapped. Why would the culprit stay in the room? Why wouldn't he escape? You're a hard man to satisfy, Mr. Utterson, but I'll do my best to convince you, Poole said. All this past week, he, or it, or whatever, locked in that office, has been crying at night, night and day, for a special medicine. He writes orders for medicine on notes and leaves them on the stairs. This practice was continued all this week. Not just one or two notes, but dozens. I've traveled to pharmacies across the city, filling these orders and sending complaints. You see, every time I return with the medicine, I was told that it's not pure. I was told to return it and go to another pharmacy. I have no idea what the medicine is, but he's desperate for it. Do you have any of these notes? Utterson asked. Poole reached into his pocket and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper. The lawyer bent over his candle and carefully examined the writing. It read as follows. I return this medicine purchased from your firm, as it is not pure and therefore useless to me. I purchased a large quantity some years ago. I'm in desperate need to refill this order. I must ask you to carefully search your supplies and find a pure and proper sample. I cannot stress enough the importance of this order. It was the last line of the note that disturbed Utterson the most. There was a sudden splash of ink at the author's emotions as the author's emotions became too strong. I beg you, the note read, please find the medicine of old. This is a strange note, Utterson said. Why is it open? The lawyer asked that rather sharply. It seems that Utterson would defend his friend Jekyll to the end. Even though he realized Poole was only trying to help, he was suspicious that Poole opened private notes. One of the pharmacists was so angry that he threw it back at me, Poole said. Do you recognize this as Dr. Jekyll's handwriting? Utterson asked. It does look like it, the butler said sulkily. But what does that matter I, when I've seen the man who wrote this? Poole blurted out. Seen him? Utterson said. Where? When? I stepped into the garden unexpectedly, Poole said. He must have come out to look for a delivery of medicine. I saw him standing at the other end of the courtyard looking through the crates. When he saw me, he let out a sharp cry and ran back up the stairs. I only saw him for a few minutes, but my blood ran cold at the sight of him. My hair practically stood on end. Sir, if that was my master, why did he scream out like a rat and run off? Poole passed his hand over his face in great despair. These are all very strange stories, Utterson said, but I think I'm beginning to see the light. Your master must be suffering, suffering some sort of breakdown. That would explain the change in his voice and avoiding his friends. He must believe that this mysterious medicine will cure him of this sickness. I do hope he is right in that matter that we can cure him. Sir, said the butler, the creature in that office is not my master, and that is that. He looked around and began to whisper, My master is tall, well-built man, 
Well, this person is much shorter and rather stooped. Do you think after all these years that I wouldn't notice where my master's head comes through the doorway? Do you think I would not recognize his footsteps? No, sir. That thing was not, is not, Dr. Jekyll. I believe that my master has been murdered. Poole, the lawyer said. Are you quite certain that you believe this? Utterson broke out into a sweat. It was unbearable. It was an unbearable thought that his oldest, dearest friend was murdered. The butler nodded slowly. We have only one option, then. We must break down the door, Utterson said. 